Hey there guys, it's Arlene here. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful summer. Uh, the, we have a lovely 100 degree heat here in Jersey today and it reminded me that I was supposed to make this video back in November, but I completely, totally forgot. Uh, so now I'm getting around to it. As you can tell even from my last video, uh, doing my review of <laughs> my review of the Galactic Star Cruiser, I'm a little behind, a little disorganized, but I've been trying to focus on my health inside and out uh, for the ages of 30 and 31. And now that I've hit 32, I'm very happy to say that I've accomplished a lot of my goals. One of them specifically being, I ran a half marathon at Walt Disney World. <laughs> this is my medal. I'm so very proud of it. Uh, quick background there. Um, so I'm a type of neurospicy that if I don't financially really invest in something absolutely outrageous, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to procrastinate and it's not going to go well. Um, so I was somehow able to actually register uh, with Run Disney. Uh, it's a fantastic organization. They work at all the different Disney locations, have races all throughout the year. And I was actually able to do the Wine and Dine Half Marathon at Walt Disney World, November 2023. I signed up last March, February time frame. And then I've been, it, it really forced me like, hey, you can't just chicken out. This isn't a 5K that you just can kind of BS your way through like I have in the past and say, oh, I'm healthy. Great. No, I need to go above and beyond to make sure I really stick to something. Uh, and so I ran the 13.1 miles in three and a half hours. I'm just, I can't believe I did it. It's just awesome. Uh, but another reason why I specifically wanted to do Run Disney is because that community really wants to focus on Disney rounding. I, as you guys already know, I love crafting. I love cosplaying. So this was the perfect marriage to get me going. I got to create a costume to run in with everyone else on the course. Uh, and then I also was able to really get out there and really feel good about my physicality and feeling so, so strong. I loved it. Yay. Um, so today I'm going to go over how I created my costume. You will see it here. <laughs> I am super, super proud of it. Uh, I've had on my Pinterest board for years that I've wanted to Disney-bound genie. Um, before I get too far into it, Disney-bounding is not cosplay. It's a little bit different. Um, so I mentioned this in my Galactic Star Cruiser video as well. Disney has very strict rules um, about costuming and things of that nature because they don't want the little kids to run up to a non-official licensed cast member uh, who's actually in a particular costume for that character uh, so because they actually have scripts they know the correct way to interact with these kids and they don't want the kids to you know think you're Princess Aurora or whoever when you're not <laughs> when you're, you're not sanctioned by Disney to act the way that you need to um, and do the official autographs and things of that nature. Um, so Disney bounding is a way that you can kind of cosplay without having to go head to toe. Um, so that's why my way inspired, if you will, uh, for my Galactic Star Cruiser. It met all of the kind of length requirements. Nothing can drag on the floor. I wasn't exactly like Ray. I didn't do my hair the same way and it was completely different colors. Um, and it just kind of fit the theme of Star Wars, but I wasn't a particular character specifically. Uh, I know kids under a certain age can actually go in full costume because no other kids are going to run up to another kid expecting them to be one of their favorite characters. Um, so when it comes to Run Disney, they also have their own set of rules. Nothing can be really dragging, uh, nothing too wide, nothing that can, you know, interfere with the safety of others while you're running. Because again, this is 13.1 miles. I got to run through all the different parks. It was so cool. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, so I needed to find a way to adapt to all their rules. If you want to see them, they have them posted uh, on their site. Uh, and one of the other big things when doing exercise for such a long time, and all cosplayers know this, is 
creating a costume that's going to last and be durable through extenuating circumstances, it's not usually our main priority. <laughs> but when it comes to running for such a long time, for such a long distance, you need to make sure that your materials are going to last the entire race. Um, so as I mentioned, I've always wanted to Disney bound as Jeannie. Jeannie was always my favorite character growing up. I mean, Robin Williams, may you rest in peace, such a phenomenal influence on my childhood. Uh, I love the character and I've always specifically loved the ending scene when he's finally free, he has his goofy hat on, and he is ready to go to Disney World now that he's free, just like he's won the Super Bowl or something. Uh, and I wanted to kind of bring that same energy, so I decided to choose Genie as my inspiration for my Disney bound running outfit. Uh, and when it comes to running, not only going along with the guidelines uh, in Run Disney to make sure it doesn't interfere with safety, for myself or other runners, um, you need to use very specific fabrics uh, if you're going to be working out or sweating a lot. You want to use synthetic fabrics, so you don't want to use anything of cotton. Um, you want to use synthetic to whisk, wick away the moisture. Um, and also protect yourself from the sun as much as possible. And then when it actually comes to the tightness, um, of the clothing you just want to be very very particular about it and make sure you're comfortable so i actually had to run in this two different times uh at least half the distance prior to the race um yes training for this thing was a b to say the least uh <laughs> it was it was a full year um not a full year it was it was eight months yeah it was eight months of of intensive running three times a week it was a lot but again totally worth it i'm so glad i did it um, but I started off with kind of an inspiration picture directly from the movie, um, finding a still, and I couldn't tell if these designs on his vacation shirt were red or orange. Uh, I ended up just deciding, you know what, I like the red, um, going with the yellow shirt. It's a, again, couldn't tell if it was a red dots or orange dots or a yellow shirt or an orange shirt. Couldn't really tell. Uh, there was too many different, I guess, lighting aspects uh, that people were posting these images online. But as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of primary colors, so I decided to go with a yellow shirt with red designs, and obviously his skin is blue, so I went with uh, blue uh, as well for, for my other colors. So I had my primary colors, red, yellow, blue. So me. I loved it. <laughs> it was perfect. Uh, so I wanted to start off with anything that I need to be actually hand dyed. Um, so I decided to start off with this cooling cloth. This is something that you just have in your pocket with you at all times. You can just have it around your neck uh, and it actually keeps you cool. It's a synthetic material. Um, so I had to make sure that I used Rit Dye Synthetic. I don't know if it'll... There you go. So it's synthetic right there. You have to make sure it says that for this type of fabric specifically. So always make sure that you're checking the type of fabric you're using, the materials, and your dye. Um, I just got myself a big old pot, followed the instructions on the back. You just have to boil some water, dip this in there for like 15 minutes or something like that. About 30 minutes, yeah. Um, until it gets the color that you wanted and it came out to this lovely color uh, that I thought was absolutely perfect for what I was going for. And then step two was making sure <clears throat> that the designs on my shirt would then match this cloth. Um, I should also mention, this was white before, <laughs> before I changed it to red. Uh, I did have a backup one that was a different shade of blue, but I was really happy that this came out as saturated and even as it did. Um, so yeah, so the next point was to create designs that would go on the yellow shirt again made of synthetic material. <clears throat> uh, so first I had to pick up these fusible cotton fabric sheets and I wanted to specify that I got the fusible cotton ones because on here it says that this may be applied to any surface that can be ironed. Again when it comes to synthetic materials especially when it comes to heat, uh, to dyeing, anything of that nature, synthetic materials need a different treatment than more like cotton type of materials. 
um, because especially applying heat to synthetics will make it melt. Any tip for people trying to iron their clothes? Don't use excessive heat because it will melt it because it's essentially plastic. Um, so make sure you get these guys, the fusible cotton fabric sheets uh, to create them. I created my designs in Photoshop, uh, just kind of based off of what I could see in these photos. So just a lot of dots and some crazy zigzags. And what I did to make sure I got the right color was actually use this little device called the Data Color Color Reader. Get my little focus. Anyways, um, so it's just a little, essentially an in, uh, in real life eyedropper tool. So all I did was uh, connect it to the mobile app. Uh, then you just kind of take off the cap here. You place it on the surface you want to measure. And then in the app, you click the measure button and it gives you, it's supposed to be more for paint. Um, but essentially I was able to then go to the reading that I measured and it gives me the RGB values. So I could actually use those RGB values in Photoshop uh, when I was ready to create it. So once I input those RGB values into my shapes in Photoshop, I printed them out on my fabric sheets, cut them out, followed the instructions to iron them on, and I came out with this. Look at it. I mean, I'm sorry. That's almost like a one-to-one -one <laughs> of GD's shirt with all the different circles and triangles and squiggles. I was, I was just so, so stinking happy with how this came out. It really looks just like Jeannie's shirt. Um, and seriously, like the red color is like a perfect match. Like even considering that these are two different uh, fabrics, so this is a synthetic and this was printed with ink on cotton, like that's, that's a damn good color match if you ask me. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with the way this came out. Uh, those are the, really the only two things I had to customize, um, but it came out so good. I'm so stinking proud of it. Ah! And then obviously to continue with dis, uh, Genie's blue skin, I have these, sorry, inside out, these lovely shorts with all of the pockets. I got some uh, two on both sides that are pretty deep and then even one in the back as well. Uh, pockets are very, very important for this type of thing. Um, and then I have the matching sports bra, of course, to go underneath. Um, one thing to really keep in mind when you're running such a long distance in Florida, of all places, that's why you start at five o'clock in the morning. It's another element to keep in mind um, <laughs> for, for these types of races is uh, because it gets so hot, you need to be willing to sacrifice pieces of clothing onto the side of the trail. They Disney has a whole thing where you can leave your things on the side and they actually have people come and pick up uh, those that extra pieces of clothing um, because you will end up needing to kind of derobe as you go uh, to make sure that you're not overheating. Um, but I was able to keep everything on and in my pockets I was able to put on these sleeves that I also got because again when you start at five in the morning, it can get cold. But by the time the sun comes up, you're dying because you're running like crazy as well in the sun. Um, so these are just some workout sleeves. And I was like, hey, they're, they're close enough to blue. Um, very, very much like Jeannie's skin uh, to, to work there. So that my sleeve, my skin was covered. Uh, and then I got this for a dollar at REI, which was insane to me. So this was like a little headband or hood. However, you kind of need to use it again in blue so had that and then for my leg warmers and my or for my calves um i got these multicolored ones just because i thought i need more color why the hell not i couldn't find any plain red plain yellow plain blue in these uh but i loved the the multicolor i thought it was very genie very me very disney um and i was able to wear all of this while i was running and I still need pockets, uh, like I said, in my shorts for my energy shoes, uh, for my energy waffles, my snacks. Because, <laughs> again, you're running for three hours. You need to kind of keep that continuous fuel. There are, like, water stations along the whole thing. Um, running culture is real, man. It's intense. It's insane. But 
I'm so glad I did this and I think my costume came out so good and you can see all these lovely pictures I'm going to put up on the screen right now. I had such a blast. They have all these professional photographers along the whole trail so you get to see me, see me from all different angles. Um, oh, I totally forgot. The star of the show. My goofy hat. <laughs> I can't believe I ran with this, uh, but it definitely, you know, helps with the whole costume. And again, you want to make sure you're protected from the sun when it does rise first thing in the morning. You want to accommodate for cold or and warm weather all at the same time. So it was a lot. I know this isn't the exact goofy hat that uh, Jeannie wears, but they no longer make that kind of hat. Um, so this is what they sell at Disney World now. I brought, purchased it uh, when I went to Disney World uh, in 2021. But yeah, I think that's that's kind of everything. So main things here is, you know, when you dye things, make sure you're using the right materials, the right materials for the right type of fabric. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, if you don't want to sweat as much or if you just want to make sure it's moisture wicking, use synthetic fabrics, that is a huge thing. And if you need to do color matching, honestly, it, this is not sponsored at all, but the color reader, it's, it is $100, but it gets the job done. It's really accurate. It's super, super simple. Um, I just, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, and it made this so much easier instead of trying to use up so much ink <laughs> and paper, trying to get the my shapes to be the exact right shade of red um, instead of a trial error process. So it was so awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you guys so much again. I can't recommend Run Disney enough. The entire community is so fun. <laughs> the, I wasn't the, obviously the majority of uh, the people in it also Disney bound as well. And some of them are, are pretty intense and insane. Uh, I applaud them dearly. This being my first real intense run, I wanted to make sure I was comfortable. You guys know I'm always comfort over function 24 seven, um, but I'm glad I did this. But to see some people, they really go ham with the, <laughs> with, with the, uh, did I say comfort over function? That's not right. Comfort and function over fashion. There we go. That's the right way to put it. Um, but a lot of people, they went really, really ham when it came to the actual look of the outfits, uh, over their, their running, but their form was still fantastic. And they, they would run past me. I was like, wow, they've been doing this a while. <laughs> um, yeah. So love the run Disney community. Please check them out. I hope this t little tutorial has been really helpful um, to kind of get you guys going into the Disney bounding community, into the running bounding community. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.